an incredible story. These two people were leaving Jerusalem, the place where the headquarters were, where the temple was, and they were going outside of town. I don't know why, but I want to say to you this morning that each and every one of us sitting here is on two journeys. Physical journey and spiritual journey. You see, we physically had to come here, but nothing changed on our inside. And exactly the same for the two disciples. They were also on a journey. Why they left Jerusalem, I said nobody knows. But in that journey, there came a time that they felt hopeless. Hopeless in that the one that they came to know as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was crucified three days ago. And in that, there was disappointment. It was three days later. They heard from the woman and the people that went to the truth that Jesus wasn't there anymore. And in that direct, it was complicated. They didn't understand that. And many times in life, in our own journeys, we don't understand the things that God does because it's not the way that we planned it exactly. And in that, we become disappointed. Now those disciples also became distracted and disappointed. And I will show you in scripture that that was exactly how they felt. And as they were walking along, something happened. Jesus came up to them and he said to them, what are we discussing? What is so important in the life that we are discussing at now? He's actually asking them, where is your focus? Where did your focus go to? And he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still and their faces were down lost. You see, when something bad happens in our lives, we come to a place where we begin to become disappointed. We become hopeless. We feel that God is it, is it worth it? Is it worth the struggle? In this COVID time, I'm sorry to say I sympathize with people. Some people have lost friends and some people have lost family members that is close to the end here. And I really sympathize with them. But don't take your focus off Jesus. Don't come to the place where you feel that you know what, I've prayed and I've prayed, but God didn't hear me. An incredible thing in this story that I read, this is the resurrection day of Jesus Christ. And what does Jesus Christ do? He goes to the two disciples and is walking away, despondent, hopeless, and he comes alongside them and he says, what is it that you are discussing? What became so important that is taking up all your attention? And Cleopas looks at Jesus and he says, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem? Are you the only one that doesn't know what happened? And I always say the Bible doesn't just put a name into the scripture. The Bible puts a name there so that we can go and do a little bit of research about who people are. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been there. One of them actually was asking, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that, we, that have happened here in these last few days? Jesus, He's the only one that knows exactly what happened. And he says, what things? What things? What is so big that has become so important in your life that it has become more important than Jesus? And Cleopas says, you know, we have hope that he would be the Messiah. 
We have hoped that you would have been the Messiah. One thing he asked about you, and he says, about Jesus of the Nazareth, just one back. It's not a problem. You see, it becomes so important. One thing he asked about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all people. Look at what they are saying. He was a prophet. No longer the Savior. Don't we do exactly the same way when our prayers are unanswered? When we begin to doubt, don't we say, Is God still there? Does He hear my prayers? Does He even know my name? I'm guilty of that sometimes. When birth comes close to my family, I also get in that place where I say, Oh, Jesus, you did not say the way I wanted. You say, when, when things don't happen the way that we expect it to happen, we think God is not the same. For God knows the plan that He has for your life, plans to be your hope and future, plans to prosper you. That's God's plan for your life. So if it doesn't fit in with the way that I thought, He doesn't mean He doesn't give you. He just means He's got a better plan for my life. I just have to be the that. But Jesus comes and He seeks the out. Along the way to Ephesus, Jesus comes to them and He says to them, Where are you going? Where are you going? What's important? Oh, we are discussing Jesus of Nazareth. We thought it was a problem. He knew it was mighty indeed. He saw his miracles. But you know what? It's the third day. Worst of all, the woman just told us that this Jesus is alive. His body is no longer in the tomb. But they didn't recognize him. And I want to say to you this morning, many times in our lives, when we go through a struggle, we don't recognize Jesus Christ next to us. We don't understand that He is the one that is next to us, even if He appears in His physical body. You see, we want to believe the same way as these disciples. They sat up in His teaching. They saw His ministry. And they saw the signs and wonders that He did. But yet, they did not really know Him. Nor did they understand it. It was in their action. They limited him. You see, God doesn't work in this box the way that I know him. He paints outside of that box. He works on the outside. And he wants to stretch me. And he wants to stretch the members of this community and the members of this church. To do what? To become the fire the light of the world. And He wants us to stand up and to rise up and to go out. And the one thing that Jesus did is He says to them, Oh, you foolish people, slow about. Is it speaking to you? Because when things don't go that well, I get to a place where I feel that, wow, God's not doing it the way that I would have liked it to be done. And in that, I believe to doubt what? The scriptures. And Jesus making the scriptures, the word of God, he starts opening up the word from the beginning of Moses, pointing to him as the Savior. You see, this law of all. Why don't you tell us that we can't say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? They would want to say, let's treat all people the same. We love all people exactly the same. We would love them to know Jesus Christ. We would love them to come in to the body of Christ. So Jesus comes next to you, the two disciples. And he begins to explain to them what the word teaches of who he is. And in that word, 
they become excited. They get excited for who this Jesus is because they say the following. They say, why is it our hearts on fire when he started speaking about the scripture? Was it our heart burning within us? Didn't we become excited for what we heard? I want to say to you this morning that we are in a privileged nation where we can take out our Bible and where we can openly open our Bible and read it and confess Jesus Christ as Savior. I've been in places where this Bible is really not seen and whenever they talk about God it is done in a way that it is so secretive. But I've been in places where I've seen the hunger of God that I one day confessed to a pastor where I said, you know what, maybe one day it will be the best thing for South Africa when we get to this place where these people are exactly right now. Because they stand up, they rise up, and they are not afraid to gather together and to, to get together as a family. I want to say to you that those two people left the fire. This coronavirus has done one thing. It has taken the members out of the fire. They have taken the coals and put them there. We are people that love to cry. We like barbecue and bride. What do we need for a bride? What do we need for a bride? Wood. What's the bed? That, that, that will be that will be the pudding. <laughs> Maybe some fire lighters. But we need certain articles to hold the fire. We would need the wood. We would need the fire lighter. Because if the wood's too wet, you must have enough fire lighters because there's no such thing as wet wood. And of course, we need the matches. Something to get that started. You see, and this is exactly what, what this is. God's word is the matches. It's the, the firelight. It's the wood. It's all in one. And when we set that light, there's that comfort of when I hear Pastor Ben speak about Jesus Christ. I want to go first. And I want to listen to who is God. I want to hear about his experience. Because I feel the comfort of the A fire gives a comfort to me. But it also has another purpose. It also purifies. You see, the fire also has that ability. When you take something and put it into the fire, it would test it, it would burn it, and it would burn all out, out all the impurities that is in that article. And in the word it says, Be holy, for I am holy. You see, God doesn't want lukewarm Christians. He wants you either hot or cold. Otherwise, he will skew you out. And I want to say today that you know what? We need to come to that place where we are either hot or cold. We have to rise up and say, I am for Jesus, I am not for me. But I want to say this to you. Those two disciples, they invited him in. You see, Jesus would just walk on by. He would step past them. After they heard the word of God, he pretended as if it was going on. But something 
stirred within them. Something that I'm speaking about right now is also stirring within your spirit. And you might be saying this, I want to know Jesus that way. I want to know Jesus the way that these disciples were. Because they were busy, they knew him, yet they didn't understand him. And God, Jesus Christ, at that moment in time, came to them and said, You know what? I'm not angry with you. I'm not even disappointed with you. But I am here to say to you, Who I am? Faith is not a feeling, it's a part of it. Because I can feel terribly bad today, but if my faith is strong, I will keep on walking, I will keep on following the one that I love. I fell in love with Jesus Christ. Sometimes people might think it's a little bit weird. But you know what? That's fine with me. I don't know where it is. As long as I know that I'm not afraid to tell people of who Jesus is. And then Jesus went with them. You see, at that moment in time, they realized, no, go on, please stay with us. Please stay with us. And it's exactly the same that Jesus is doing right now. He says, you know what? I won't impose myself on you. I won't force myself on you. But if you invite me in, I will come and I will stay with you. I will be with you. I will be your God. You see, we need to trust God. We need to trust Him in our everyday world, even when things don't work out the way that we want them to work out. <laughs> Not a spirit of fear, but of power. Can we trust God to give us the power of His name? For He says, Go in my name, proclaim in my name, and that name is Jesus. Speak to sickness, speak to poverty, take authority in my name, and His name is Jesus. And I will stand up for that day. Because Jesus is his name. I'll give you a spirit, one spirit of fear, of power, and of love. Can we love people the way that God loves us? You see, if I cannot love people in the way that God loves me, I cannot really be the one that God is using. Even though I might know the scriptures. You see, because God removes all barriers from people. Jesus spoke to the woman at the well. He spoke to the prostitute. And he said to her, Did no one cast the first one? He says, Neither do I condemn you, but change your ways. He didn't tell it to go on and do the same thing again. You see, if God touches your life, you cannot stay the same. There is no way that you can stay the same. It is impossible. The day that I met my wife, I didn't do anything exactly the way that she wanted me to do things. And after 38 years, I'm still not doing exactly the same thing that she wants. But I'm working on that. My socks are getting closer to the wash basin or wherever it has to go. But what I want to say is this, that we have a relationship, and in that relationship I am working to become a better husband. And Jesus wants exactly the same for us. He wants us to become better. And then, I want to close off. In the moment that they realized who this Jesus was, he disappears. The Bible says he vanishes after the breaking of the bread. In that moment, when Jesus becomes quiet in your life, 
Know that you know it has received signs and wonders. Your faith is strong enough and we Let that be, become the thing that pushes you forward to say that, wow, I don't have to see to pray in His name. I don't have to see to believe that He is real. I don't have to see to be excited because the fire within me has gotten to be excited. We become a living, walking, talking testament. And though the hour was late, the two disciples rushed back and they said, It is true, He has risen. I want to say to you this morning, may Jesus arise in your life again. May Jesus become the center point in your life once again. May you become excited and may you be the flame that swallows the others. For the people that are outside, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to come back to the church. I want you to come back and to take up your place. Because the Bible says, where there is unity, God wants a blessing. And only a cold outside the fire can stay for so long. Then it dies down. Come back. Come back. We are not irresponsible people in the church. We keep our distance. We look after one another. And we love one another. And I just want to close this. And you can close your eyes because I'm just going to close it out. And I just want to ask you this question at this point. Do you know this Jesus that I was talking about? Do you have that relationship with him? And if you don't have that relationship with him, this is a very good time to say to me, Jesus, I'm sorry. Sorry that my focus left you. And I'm sorry that I even doubted you. You died. But Father, I want that relationship. And I want to ask you to do something very voluntary. If you feel that you are like one of these disciples that walk away way or are on your way, why don't you just stand with me? Because I'm already standing. And I just want to say to God, Father, forgive us. Will give us Father that we sometimes doubt. We are great to be very hard. And I want to say, Father God, that we love you. We are you. And Jesus, as we stand up and we stand before you, we commit ourselves, Jesus, to one thing, to one thing on you. That's to be on fire for you. Lord God, that when we speak in the name of Jesus, that we will break struggles. And Father God, that we would be the fire and the light of this world. Father God, I bless these people. You see them, Father. You know them by them. Father God. May your hand of abundance be upon their lives. May you bless them. Father God, may you widen their legs. In Jesus' mighty name.